Well, I think it's it's the downside that there is with with anything being a marketplace, right? Like, you know, once you're in a a world that's that's just branded everywhere and once you've decided to embrace that, it gets harder to get at things that aren't surface level. Um, it gets harder to get out of a kind of consumerist mindset. Um, and it gets harder to teach the sorts of values that higher ed in really any format wants to teach, things like patience and critical thinking and open-mindedness and, and the sorts of things that, that branding really doesn't work off of at all. In fact, it works off of the opposite. Welcome back to the Magellan Podcast, navigating education in the 21st century. Here, the Magellan Learning Solutions partners, Wayne Patton, Aaron Traphagan, and Emily Hetty talk about the biggest questions and issues in higher education. Today's episode is on higher education as a marketplace. Part five, the final episode of a five-part leadership series on how to talk about higher education. And welcome back to the Magellan Learning Solutions podcast. This is episode five of our podcast on leadership in higher education. Specifically, we've been exploring five specific Stroke. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh. Right, start over. No, no. Take two. No, I think that was clean enough that I could start from the word. Oh, I can't do it. <laughs> no. oh. Think terrible thoughts. Think terrible thoughts. Think terrible thoughts. Mm, bite my tongue. Specifically, we've been looking at uh, higher education uh, in the context of five metaphors. We started out by looking uh, at higher ed in the context of an ecosystem, moved on to discussing higher education as a culture, higher education as a machine, higher education as an institution. And this week, we'll discuss higher education as a marketplace. And uh, as we've done each week, we'll ask Emily Hetty to give us a little introduction as to how we got here, why we're talking about this. Sure. So um, I've mentioned a few times before, but if you're just joining us on this episode five of this series, um, I'll say again, um, this all came from a project uh, where we wanted ultimately to train our own team members to work more effectively with our client institutions. A uh, big piece of, of leadership really anywhere, is, is knowing how to read your, your context well. So um, we wanted our team members who, for the most part, didn't have experience on scores and scores and scores of campuses um, to get a really quick read on how the campus worked, um, what its values were, um, how it was likely to embrace a change versus the sorts of things that were just not going to fly there um, so that the advice that we give and the systems we help put in place make sense for that campus and, and ultimately have some staying power for them. So that's where we are now. Um, the last of these is, is one that I think most campuses are interested in, but nobody really wants to acknowledge it. Yeah, and like we were saying kind of prior to starting recording here, it, it's kind of a, a dicey area to talk about because – most academics don't like the idea of, of thinking of education as a product or, you know, as this concept of consumers and, and service. But it, let's talk about in what ways higher education is like a marketplace. What, what are those comparisons? So one just really obvious place um, where I think every campus has to acknowledge that they're, they're functioning like a marketplace and they're in the marketplace is, is enrollment. It's admissions, right? Um, every campus has to find a way to sell the experience that they're offering, whether that's an online experience or whether it's a residential experience. And um, hopefully they do that um, through ethical activities that accurately describe exactly what's happening in that, in that campus space. Um, and there's all kinds of stuff that goes into this. There's, you know, market analytics, there's branding activities, there's thinking about how the messaging will fly with different groups. And there's also really, um, for some campuses, taking the time to shape the sort of consumer that they want to ultimately be attracted to them. Um, other campuses, I think, are more worried about just simply meeting numbers um, because they don't have the luxury of choosing who comes. Yeah, and like any other kind of marketplace experience, there are things that will happen um, <clears throat> with students that will find them uh, loving their uh, college experience and so therefore likely staying at their mm -hmm. university of choice, uh, or uh, they can have... Uh, things that happen to them that find them wanting to leave within the context of that marketplace. So it's, it is that uh, that's the reality. If a student has a bad residential experience because of X number of factors, 
uh, those are often the things that cause them to leave. Same thing in an online environment. If if those things we've talked about previously in the other parts of this um, series uh, aren't in place or in a few other podcasts we've done, things like the ecosystem or, you know, sound um, soundly designed courses, et cetera, they will vote with their feet, as it were, and, and go somewhere else where they'll have a better experience. So it's very much a traditional marketplace in that sense. Yeah, and all the things you would look at in a traditional marketplace. So if I'm comparing two cars, I might look at, you know, what, what the fuel economy is on it, you know, what the longevity is, what, you know, what is its safety ratings, all these different pieces. So, you know, students are looking at things, you know, from the, the pure educational standpoint. I mean, what what am I getting versus what am I paying for? You know, the brand versus a less known brand. Uh, some of the folks are paying for what are the additional things. You know, we talked in, a, in another episode about, you know, all of the extracurricular things uh, that come on college campuses now. So all of that, you know, plays in. I think one of the, the marketing things I've seen quite often now is that cost to degree. So you're going to get an MBA here. You're going to get an MBA here. This one costs you 15000 This one costs you 40000 And depending on what's the important factor to the student, that can – can really drive where they decide to make their purchase. And do students have access to information that shows what do the employers in the field think of uh, the students that came out of uh, A, B, or C, or D university? Does that matter? Does, do, are they even thinking about that? So a lot of factors there that, that are in play. And, and there are also the soft factors, um, which, I mean, I, I don't want to generalize too much, but um, I know when I was running an enrollment office, um, we had to spend a lot of time showing prospective students all the nooks and crannies on campus because a big part of making the cell, as it were, was helping students to see themselves as part of that community. And the same thing happens online, right? That's, that's how consumer behavior works, right? In a, in a capitalist economy, when you make a purchase, you're, you're in a sense announcing something about yourself. Um, so you, you might choose all kinds of things on logical factors, but style points also matter. Sure. And identity points matter. Well, and there's a there's a big online provider right now that does a great job with their commercials of showing some of the intangible that accomplishing something to be the first in their family to do something to us, you know, work so hard to achieve a goal they've had their whole life. Um, you know, so it's yeah, it's not always the tangible things. It, it can be those intangibles uh, as well, you know, but so there, there's clearly marketplace like uh, elements out there. Um are there downsides to thinking about higher ed as a marketplace? What, and, and what are well, – obviously, I know there are. That's why I'm asking the question. But what, what are they? There are no downsides, Aaron. There are no. Perfect. Moving on. <laughs> well, I think it's, it's the downside that there is with, with anything being a marketplace, right? Like, you know, once you're in a, a world that's, that's just branded everywhere and once you've decided to embrace that – it gets harder to get at things that aren't surface level. Um, it gets harder to get out of a kind of consumerist mindset. Um, and it gets harder to teach the sorts of values that higher ed in really any format wants to teach. Things like patience and critical thinking and open-mindedness and, and the sorts of things that, that branding really doesn't work off of at all. In fact, it works off of the opposite. Yeah, I, I know as we kind of in, in, in putting ourselves in place of the – leaders that are hopefully listening to this and thinking about, oh, how do I how do I see each of these lanes that we've discussed in these five parts? And we were saying earlier, I mean, I'm very comfortable given how I came up through the ranks of seeing um, uh, especially online higher education as a machine because I, I, I get the positives that come with that. I've seen that. I've helped build that. I also get the downsides. Same thing with uh, seeing it the marketplace piece here, I'm very comfortable with that because, again, that's how I came up. But I have to be um, aware and other leaders have to be aware that there is a downside to that. And, and I think of – I won't name the there's – a, there's a national brand of a, an online program that I know when I think about it and I think when others think about it, and they've been very successful, I think of them as a business more than I think of them as an institution of higher learning. And – They've been around for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. So I know that's, and that's their brand, mm -hmm. and that has a value. But it's not going to attract a certain type of student and a lot of students who they, that's not their market. So I, I think one downside is, to your point, they and a few others have really been, they have pushed themselves really as this service model. 
Yep. And in a way, it's also very heavily mechanized, mm-hmm. which plays into their success. Mm-hmm. I don't know that they'll ever want to or if they wanted to shake that brand identity. Well, and I'll be honest, I think that could actually describe several large yes. online players yeah. right yeah. now. So I wasn't I don't think sure that's... who you were talking about. <laughs> I, was trying, I was trying to be vague. So, so I mean, I, I think if I think I'm trying to think as as the pure academic, which I am not that's not my role in the company uh that's why we have emily but um you know faculty think about how does it change you know at that purest part of what it is how does it change the relationship between a student and the faculty member like thinking back to the sitting on the steps at the feet of Mm -hmm. you know these greek philosophers just you know absorbing the knowledge and having these conversations and and that that kind of I mean, honestly, I had a very naive sense of what the it, God, the campus experience would be like. That's what I had in my head was not that. Um, but but going from that, and I know that's how most traditional faculty members see that that relationship of them as this experienced, knowledgeable you know individual who's trying to help you know teach and shape the this student. When you shift to a you know an economic model, uh, you know and and you're the customer and I am simply providing you this product, it can really change mm-hmm. that relationship and, and some of the power dynamic, even in a way that makes it hard to impart some of what you're trying, especially in the traditional model, mm-hmm. some of what you're really trying to teach that's beyond just this pieces of information, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know I've run into situations on multiple campuses where students are ready to leave after partway through their first semester, um, you know, online or residential, because the branded experience they're having doesn't match what they expected from marketing. And um, the, the student success part of me says everybody has a rough transition to college, right? I mean, if you read John Henry Newman's idea of a university from 1857, he talks about how terrible the first term in college is. It's hard for everybody. So be patient and wait. But if you're in branded world, right, and you go to a restaurant – and McDonald's isn't fun and doesn't provide joy, you're not coming back. Um, You know, same thing. If you're at Disney World and it's not magical, you're not coming back. If your Levi's aren't comfortable and don't make you feel rugged, you're not (laughs) going to buy another pair. You may not wear them again. Um, So when you're in that mentality, it Mm -hmm. gets really, really hard sometimes to let the experience blossom um, in the way that it will just because you're going through natural transitions um, to the higher ed space, whether that's online or residential. And at least traditionally, you have the relationship to, to sort of overcome that with it's higher, higher, harder, sorry, uh, in the online space where that personal one-on-one relationship mm-hmm. with faculty isn't as solid. Yeah. So now you have a student that literally is is in a course and they think your job in the course is to pass them. And I'm not saying this is everybody, but, you know, it and the, they are paying to get this degree and almost mentally skipping the idea that, you know, they're earned the degree, right. even though you're paying for the opportunity to do it, right. you know, it can change that mindset. And I've seen that in, in, you know, in several instances where they're like, no, I'm paying for this. Mm-hmm. You know, I expect to get what I'm paying for. That's where a term like client maybe makes more sense mm-hmm. than customer right? in some ways, because like I, I have a financial planner and in some sense I pay him to make me money. But I'm also not going to fire him if the markets are down <clears throat> for a quarter and yeah. it doesn't work out exactly the way that I would like for it to. Mm-hmm. Um, because his job is to give me wise advice. It's not, it's not to guarantee a certain outcome. Yeah. Yeah, Aaron, you give a good example. In, in, uh, the, there's a movie that talks about a, a large hamburger chain. <laughs> and it, it, the original, I guess, version of that was a really good like grill that made good hamburgers and they were busy and they made good french fries and good shakes and then they going back to our previous podcast they they mechanized because they thought they could serve the marketplace in a in a bigger way and uh, I, I, it's amazing how many times i compare what we do to to food service but it you know the i think it lines up cuz you do you lose something. To your point, you wanted to have this very socratic experience as a young college student and and you didn't. You there was that that notion was like the original grill, and then it becomes this franchise that has you know ten thousand. Where's the beef? Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, and so it, it that there's a there's a bit of what you lose. You, you've 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 served 
many billions of people now. And so some of these larger institutions, they have served the marketplace in a big way. A lot of people have gotten a degree from these institutions. Mm -hmm. But was it as good as sitting on the steps in Athens, uh, you know, 2,300 years ago? It's different, right? So it's we've lost something there. Le- less, less hemlock. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, yeah. At Magellan Learning Solutions, our mission is to help our clients' educational missions with tailored curricular and operational solutions to help them thrive. To meet the accompanying challenges, the experts at Magellan Learning Solutions offer a full spectrum of services in the areas of curriculum development, operational administration, training and professional development, enrollment in marketing, or custom solutions to niche projects. Whether managing turnkey projects, consulting, or acting as a force multiplier, our experience and relational approach will help your team attain its goals. For all your educational needs, Think Magellan. Visit us at thinkmagellan.com today and set up an introductory meeting. Well, so... As, uh, as we're fond of asking, what is a leader to do? So it seems to me one place a leader can be, can be helpful here is, um, you know, as campuses go through their, their branding initiatives, which a whole lot of them are doing right now, looking at their marketing, um, you know, just being really, really sensitive to leading the conversation about, you know, what do you want the brand to be aspirationally, but also what brand makes sense given the market you're in. Because, um, I mean, I, I'm aware of a college that would love to go up market, um, and I think that's, that's a laudable goal. They would like to have more, um, more say in what students they admit. They'd like to be admitting 15% rather than 50% and so on, but they just don't have enough applications for that to happen. So they want to brand their way to that. That's not going to be possible, given the context that they're in. Moreover, that's outside the scope of their mission. Um, so they're going to have some hard questions to ask, and it's, it's really on their leaders um, and it starts with the president, but I think it's also the board, it's the deans, it's everybody else to say, who are we missionally? Um, how does that need to show up in our brand? And then let that brand conversation trickle all the way down. And by all the way down, I mean to the people that work your front desks, as student workers at midnight in the dorm. Um, they'll tell you a whole lot, um, just like your faculty can. Yeah, great point. One of our first clients was uh, uh, a faith-based school down in South Carolina, and the, we was having a discussion with the president, and we we, talk, we were talking about certain notions of growth, and I, I said, you know, what's too big? And I don't know if this is his line or he, he borrowed it from someone else or paraphrased it, but he said, when we go off mission. Hmm. And so it's kind of like that is a theme that's run throughout this conversation. Leaders need to be constantly going back to, are we on mission do we need to tweak the mission given the changing dynamics of, of the world and technology and where we are? You know, it's not 1857 anymore. It's, mm-hmm. you know, 2023. So to be mindful of the mission, to be mindful of the changing marketplace and somehow doing that dance of making sure the, the, the two align. Well, and probably internally, right, is there work on creating some alignment amongst the different units within the university, right? Because I think sometimes you go to a school and, you know, you have the administration and folks who have a sense of what we're quote unquote selling. And then you have faculty who have a different sense of what we're doing, you know, and Mm -hmm. there's this disjointedness, right? So it's, it kind of goes to what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I kind of got sold this because, you know, they have more direct kind of control over the staff who are doing admissions but you get there and then the faculty are like no our our role is to do this so getting that harmony internally of who we really are and then i think you you know you said it you've got to be honest about that if what's important to us as an institution is that you leave with this kind of knowledge and this kind of you know uh awareness and and abilities then that has to be what we sell students. If we expect students to spend a certain amount of time engaged in courses and we expect them to do a certain amount of work and it needs to be at this caliber, but to sell them, oh, you can do school anytime you want, however you want, you know, it's it's sort of a, but a lot of the flexibility is sold. That flexibility as it's translated to the consumer is like, oh, I can kind of do it whenever I have time, but that's not the reality of most of these 
especially an online program, you know, it's, there are still things that need to be done. And I've finding a way to brand what you mean by flexibility so that it accurately rep- represents though, what reality is. Yeah. It's, it's a hard balance, but I think finding that congruence mm-hmm. between it all so that the person making the purchase, you know, gets, you know, the, the reality of what they've purchased. Yeah. I think um, to the extent that it's possible within your mission and within how you do things too, um, making some space, deliberate space as a leader for some maybe, um, if not off-brand, but maybe extra-branded experiences mm-hmm. is, is really important. Um, that may be something like, um, <clears throat> you know, I mentioned the Ohio State football Saturdays on a previous thing. You know, maybe not everybody wants to go to the football game, but maybe you could do some Buckeye service opportunities on a Saturday. Mm-hmm. So you've got a meaningful activity for Saturday that isn't, something you had to think of. Um, you know, maybe if it's, if it's in the online space um, and what you've branded as flexibility and you're a working mom or you're military or you're this, you're that, maybe you're actually 18 and you're wishing you could have a more traditional college experience. So maybe it's a hangout space that's online on a Saturday evening. Um, so there's all kinds of ways you could kind of think productively um, about diversifying the brand without getting off the brand, if that, if that makes sense. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And it, there's opportunities there because, again, as we often say, and we said in an earlier, several earlier podcasts, and what that Inside Higher Ed article said uh, some months ago, it's, this is still the frontier of online learning. So yeah. those, the ways to think that through and how to do that, I mean, I mean, we're in the uh, the uh, Wright Brothers era of airplane flight, basically, and so there's a lot of opportunity, a lot of potential to yeah. to to think that through and to do it better. Well, and that's kind of the whole point of this, you know, is is to reiterate what we talked about in the first episode. These are not like the only five ways to think about it. You may have another metaphor that fits uh, that you traditionally think of, and that's great. In fact, uh, feel free to email Wayne, uh, info at thinkmagellan.com, and you can share your metaphors with him. Um, <laughs> and maybe we can discuss those in a future podcast because I think they bring value. And that's what, you know, we were talking about at the beginning. These aren't business models you're overlaying per se, and then you have to follow this set of practices and procedures. Uh, These are all things you can kind of overlay these transparencies and look at your institution in the light of how they function in that way. Uh, And I think it can reveal things you might not have seen before. Um, And then really the real model is, is your organization. Uh, it just has components that you've used of these metaphors to help improve what's going on. Yeah, um, just by way of kind of bringing together all five of these, there's a there's a Harvard Business Review article that I, I cited in the white paper that, that really struck me. It was about how many campuses, especially campuses in trouble, are bringing in a disruptive leader. Um, and then almost to a man or a woman, but mostly a man, um, those leaders fail. Um, the reason being... Um, statistically, Aaron. No, it's all good. I'm <laughs> yeah, statistically. <laughs> um, the reason being, culture matters. Um, so, you know, when you bring in someone whose personal brand is disruption, it's it's upending everything the mm-hmm. campus knows. They're not going to typically have the kind of sympathetic, empathetic, listening-heavy conversations that need to happen if somebody's going to work effectively within the culture and the context of any given campus. So what ends up happening is the campus as a whole digs in their feet. Mm. The leader proves ineffective, the plans don't come to fruition, and they're gone. And then the campus is in a worse space, typically because that leader spent a lot of money on their disruption plans Mm -hmm. over those few years. And it's not a good scene. So I think that the takeaway from all of these is, you know, disruption can be a, a fine thing, but it needs to happen in a way that's that's in concert with the rest of this, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Wayne and I like to do a little music. A minor chord that's well-placed makes a song. Um, a minor chord that doesn't go with the rest of the song doesn't work. Um, and I think that's that's sort of where we are here. you got to listen to the music of the campus. Um, so whatever song you sing, whatever note you play um, – bring something new and something good um, rather than something discordant. Uh, great point. And you just can't smash the guitar Pete Townsend style, no. right? There'll be no smashing of guitars. <laughs> no, great point. Harmony is something we strive for uh, in, in our, our, our working relationship here and with our clients. So it's, this has been, a, I think, beneficial series for us to, to look at as a team. And hopefully it's been beneficial for um, our friends out there in the space. 
Yeah, and with that, we uh, we appreciate you tuning in with us for uh, all five episodes of the uh, the Magellan Podcast uh, for our series on leadership. Uh, we look forward to speaking to you again. Uh, we're coming up with some great topics uh, to bring you here in season two of the Magellan Podcast, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to our conversation on higher education as a marketplace. If you enjoyed our talk today or if it helped you in your educational journey, take a moment and leave a review to let us know what you think. Look for our other episodes in this series. If you or your school is looking for help with enrollment in marketing, curriculum services, academic operations services, training and professional development, or you need help with a custom solution, think Magellan. Our team would love to help. Find us at thinkmagellan.com and contact us to set up an introductory meeting. Thank you for joining us on the Magellan Podcast, Navigating Education in the 21st Century.